Um, now I'll invite Ruth to make some opening comments. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like, I like feel I didn't come structured, you know. This, this is the politician side of me now. Yeah, just imagine now me as the politician. But I was in the Kenyan parliament. I just happened to be a scientist, and there were four of us. So whenever there was um, a, a motion on uh, research, on higher education, th there would just be four of us. And the quorum was always 30. So we just made sure that we, nobody stood up to mention that there was no quorum. Otherwise, we wouldn't pass anything. We wouldn't debate anything. But to tell you the truth is by the grace of God that we even now in Kenya can put uh, GMO crops in the fields of farmers. It's been a journey of about 10 years. And I recall personally being in a meeting, an international meeting in Vienna, and one of the Africans who, are, who was working on GMOs was on the stage to speak and she was shouted down. They wouldn't let her speak. And this happened on two occasions. At that time, I didn't know anything. I would deal with the eating part, you know? What are we eating? But I became interested later. Why are people so upset with this GMO, with this technology? <laughs> That's how I started to learn about it. And then by, uh, Monsanto uh, came to Kenya, and they wanted to start Biotechnology Advisory Council, and someone recommended me. They said, if you want to hear what the truth, rather than what you want to hear, go and talk to Ruth. So they came to me, and they sat in my office, going round, round. Then I said, what exactly do you want? Said, oh, you know, we are starting this, and we want someone from Africa to help us out. And I said, Monsanto? Really? Uh, are you trying to buy me out or something? Finally, I said, no. I, I better not oppose something without learning about it. So I agreed, but I warned them, if I come and you are trying to get me to do things I don't agree with, I'll run away, you'll never see me again. <laughs> so my first meeting in St. Louis, Missouri, you arrive there and they take you to the labs. And I'm aware of Kenyan labs, African laboratories. And I went to these laboratories in St. Louis, Missouri, and I couldn't stop looking and wondering and being amazed. I say, if this is what you have here, I want our young African scientists to study the same thing. I want them to be here. Because we can't help our governments if we don't know what we're doing. You know? And when you come from Canada, USA, Europe, they say, ah, you know, we call white people Muzungu. You know, that's Muzungu technology. Maybe they have something, you know, to stop us from producing children. You know, they won't listen to it. Yeah. They say we need to train our own scientists. Actually, I stayed on the Biotechnology Advisory Council for five years instead of three years. And, and now a technology that I was a part of, you know, recommending the drought-tolerant maize is already being grown in my part of the world, in Kenya, you know, and doing very well. So, you know, you have to look at the long-term view, and I think when you are a, a scientist, you just need to be a bit rational. Uh, but the biosafety legislation, it came, and the abuses are received, and some journalists calling him from Denmark, and Ruth, do you know what you are doing for your people? And aren't you going to be regret when you are gone? And I say, I'll be gone. So how do I regret when I'm already gone, you know? <laughs> Your people are going to die, and what legacy do you want to leave behind? And do you know about this GMO? And I told him, you know what, you don't know about me. You have never seen hunger in the face. And I'm not saying it is going to solve world hunger, but you don't know what that means. And uh, this is really neocolonialism. Don't even touch me on that one. So they left me alone. But then come to Kenya itself. Come to Kenya. You know, politicians don't know anything. They just, they're just politicians. They have to deal with everything. But like uh, our former politician, I think it was Grant, he's been in this meeting, he said, policy makers, you have to know how to approach them. They'll actually listen. So being a scientist and now a politician, you know, I just had to approach them. And I knew what they like. They like to make trips overseas. 
So we, we have, the, and to go shopping, they don't even sit in meetings like this. And so, you know, I advised whoever was sponsoring this, I say, look, I travel a lot. I don't have to come with them. I can tell you who to pick, the most vocal ones, who make a difference, who influence others. Take them to see. Seeing is believing. So they were actually sponsored to go to South Africa. They see South Africa, what was going on, and they say, I want this in my constituency. Is it available today? <laughs> and then they are reminded it's research. You know, it takes 10 years. I said, oh, 10 years? By that time, their term will have ended. They'll not be members of parliament anymore, you know, so it won't matter. But to tell you the truth, I remember the last year I was in parliament, 2007. That was the last session we were ready to pass the biosafety legisl legislation. And my point was, so do you support GMO? I said it's not a question of I support or I don't support. We have to promote science. We are going to be a world, a laughing stock on the world stage as Kenya if we are not part of the world that promotes science. And maybe through this GMO you are rejecting, something else will come up that you'll regret, that you need to actually address yourselves to. So it was just about to be passed in Parliament, 2007, and there were demonstrators outside. We were going to election, and it just died right there. It didn't pass. So that was the parliament I was in. So when the next parliament came, they asked me, where do we go with this? I said, take them out to visit. Put, choose the new members now and take them out to visit. And that's what actually happened. So we were able to create a biosafety authority and uh, then now moving forward and then uh, a, a, a sister of our, our, our president who was a um, minister for health. It didn't even fall under her. But she developed uh, cancer, breast cancer, went to the US. By the time she came back, she picked up this act, decided it was under her docket, and decided to ban GMO. So it sat there, you know, politically. It just sat there. Oh, I've been told in the USA, there are even USA people who don't like this technology. It causes cancer and so on, and I told them, we have had cancer even before GMO came, isn't it, yeah. Then, and also politicians, you know, they bring oranges, apples, you know, these are from South Africa. They are going to make the men sterile, and the women will not have children. And you may have heard here, you tell an African man you are going to be sterile, you know, you are in trouble. So. We were able then to pass it, and it hasn't moved, it hadn't moved forward a year ago, but right now, we are lucky that our deputy president, when he was minister for agriculture, was able to see what this technology is all about, and he has been supporting it, and he just put his chest and said, Kenya is going to go by technology, and so, we are now moving to have this demonstrated in the farmer's fields, not enclosed anymore. Now, what does that mean, actually? It also means that if we are going to do the trade regionally, our neighbors may not want to buy what we have if they haven't passed the same. As I told you, Africa is 54 countries. We don't even do much of internal trade. Europe is there, you know, already saying, if you go GMO, they have already issued a statement. If you go GMO, we are not going to take any produce from you. Sorry, you know, and I'm a grandmother, to hell with them. So, you know, really, what, how do we remain so archaic, primitive, you know? It's, I travel and I never ask, is this food GMO? And I'm still alive. But Canada, I think, was smart, Phil. You don't use the word GMO. Because GMO word now is like abortion. So can you promote whatever you are using quickly to call it something different? So I just wanted to share with you that it's very difficult. The world has become so difficult. We don't know what we're going to eat. If we cannot import your produce from here, where you grow a lot because of some regulation, we can continue to starve. Yeah? And... 
I think the world is just confused. But right from the word go finally, let me say this. I think the scientists, we already know scientists are not good communicators. They didn't communicate well. They are afraid. They hide. They are not transparent. If I say this, what will happen? They fear to be attacked. You see, then by the time, and when you behave like that, the consumers and the policymakers say, what are you hiding? You know, what are you hiding? It's better to be transparent. Put it out there and we move forward. And finally, why does every technology require regulation? I don't understand. Every technology requires regulation. And the process is so long. By the time you are ready in 10 years, another technology, so many others have come. So I think we have done ourselves a lot of disservice by saying everything requires regulation. And I don't know how we are going to sort it out. But we shall leave it to the, do you big guys, you know, when you come to Africa, then we see how you do it. But you people sort out your wars first. And then when you come, we already have a few things sorted out. But um, promoting science for me is absolutely critical. And uh, I do that with our governments uh, so they can put more money into science. And I think collaboration is, is absolutely necessary. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Ruth.